So my number one, uh, to continue the theme of a mystery, is Zodiac from 2007. This is a film <laughs> directed by David Fincher, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Robert Downey Jr., Mark Ruffalo, Chloe Sevigny, and actually a bunch of other people. It's a pretty stacked cast. The summary of the plot, between 1968 and 1983, a San Francisco cartoonist becomes an amateur detective obsessed with tracking down the Zodiac Killer, an unidentified individual who terrorizes Northern California with a killing spree. Um, so I think a lot of the themes we just discussed in Vertigo about mystery, unease, um, paradoxes are, are the reason why to me, like those things do all represent San Francisco. And to me, this film sums all that up um, very, very well, um, especially in the, in the sense that this is a real life case. The Zodiac Killer is real. Actually, the previous film I discussed, Dirty Harry, is a... Uh, portrayal of this i mean they, the scorpio killer is based on the zodiac killer they it's, mm -hmm. scorpio is fictional and at the time the killer was still um you know in the middle of the killing spree zodiac and they made dirty harry about it so there's actually kind of a connection between these two films in a way um but this is a real life serial killer that is a case that has never been solved and this movie what i think does so brilliantly is capture the fact that a lot of times in life you can obsess over something about trying to find the answer and there is no answer to it. You'll never find the answer. And that's, uh, and how do you wrestle with that? How far do you take your obsession? How far do you take your curiosity to trying to solve something that honestly is unsolvable as is really like most of life is, you know, all the, you know, unanswered questions of life. I think kind of the point is you're never going to answer them. Mm -hmm. um, and picking a, a killer and a case that took place over decades. So it's beautiful, all the trans, uh, the um, passage of time montages. Fincher does a lot of great things. It's a great sequence where you see the Transamerica building being made to show passages of time. Um, another brilliant scene of uh, just the screen is totally black and there's just rate songs and it's like someone turning a radio dial and the songs are just um, changing through time, like the hits mm -hmm. through the years to show passage of time. This movie takes place over a grand period of time with a real case that does never get solved. To this day, we don't still know who the, the killer is, um, and it shows the lengths that uh, this obsession goes with uh, impacting the lives of these characters who become so wrapped up in finding these answers. And for me, I think San Francisco, like I was saying in the the earlier statement with Vertigo, is a city that I continue to travel to, continue to enjoy, and continue to try to unpack and try to solve. And I think at some point, I just have to realize, like, yeah, the city is going to, it changes so often, and there really is no one version of San Francisco, and that's part of what makes a city so spe special, instead of trying to feel like I can nail it down, which is something that I try each time I go, or even coming up with this list. I'm like, okay, what is really my, what do I feel about San Francisco, and how can I nail that down in film? And you really can't, because the city, you can't nail it down, I don't think, uh, much in the same way that these characters uh, in this, not characters, these, well, they're real life people, but these portrayals of them just become so obsessed with uh, trying to find an answer that you can't answer. And I, you know, I can't answer why San Francisco, I do love it um, and why it's such an interesting city and so unique. I mean, I, you just can't say, and I think going there and experiencing it, that's what you realize that it is an unanswered question, uh, which is what I think this film does, uh, does so well, you know, not to mention again, like I said, with Dirty Harry, I have this, um, vision or impression of san francisco being sort of uh trapped in amber in the 70s in terms of how it looks and this film is majority set in the 70s and even when it goes through the 80s and then into the early 90s this this fashions change a little bit but like the city still looks the same yeah they build the transamerica building so it's not entirely accurate but the city still looks the same and i think that is something that is so unique about the place as well like uh the look of it really hasn't changed even though so much else about the city has so um, and, you know, I think the film is totally brilliant, like one of the best films released in the century easily. Uh, my favorite film by David Fincher is one of my favorite directors. I was blown away by this film when I first saw it. And each time I see it, I just am struck by the mastery of every aspect of this film. Um, and it's uh, it's 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 fantastic. Um, but uh, yeah, this to me really sums up the look, the mood, the feeling I get from San Francisco and this admission that I have to just be like, look, I will. It will always be an enigma. But I think that what makes the city so special and so unique that I can't nail it down and I'll, I'll never be able to, but Hey, that's, that's why, why, why I love it. <laughs> if it were up to you, Alex, it sounds like San Francisco for you is a city where people get killed. 
I was, yes, no, every single one of my movies deal with murder and crime. The fascinations and, I, it, and people yeah, getting it, shot. I don't know. Brutally. It, I, I know. Doesn't what? sound like a fun place at all. I know. It's just funny. <laughs> After I put the list together, I looked at, oh, wait a second. These are all like crime, you know, movies based on real crimes, actually. You know, and you can even say yeah. Dirty Harry's based on real crime. But so, yeah, maybe that's trying to say something that I don't know, <laughs> that, that I didn't realize subconsciously. <laughs> I just associate the city with crime. I, I don't know, but uh, that's fascinating. That's, that, it is uh, fascinating. Yeah, it is. Uh, I don't know what this is about the city slash you, my friend. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I agree with everything you said. Um, I haven't watched this movie only a couple of times. It was a long movie, but every time I watch it, it's it's an experience in itself. It's just brilliant in every department because that's just how Fincher is. Um, I Whenever I watch this movie, though, I'm always... I always think of, because I know how many takes Fincher takes, I'm always doing the math in my head that this movie is so long. <laughs> and if each take, each scene is like 80 takes at least, how long did it take? And what a brutal exercise this must have been to shoot this movie. Yeah. Um, so I have to actively suppress that thought. And in fact, it took me a while to come around to Fincher and really appreciate it. And it's because of this movie, because I would just get so caught up in that, that this is like the antithesis of what movie making should be in my mind, that mm. you sort of beat something down so to that degree that somehow it just becomes, in, I'm sure in his mind, like natural. But right. it be- to me, to that sort of feels yeah. like the antithesis to you know spontaneity the kind of stuff that i respond to in film mm. with some with preparation of course like look at all of my people right like link later woody allen mm-hmm. all these people are all about sort of sponta- spontaneity that has been put on screen with a lot of homework and preparedness mm-hmm. so but over time as i've you know watched more and more of finch's movies I, i've come around to that and i've come around to how you know, excited actors feel. It's not for everybody, for sure. Right, right. But there's a certain kind of actor who loves that and, you know, takes on that challenge head on. So uh, it's also interesting to watch this movie. I hadn't seen it in a while, but Robert Downey Jr. essentially is Iron Man in this movie. It's the same. <laughs> it's like, you know, one step before that is Iron yeah, Man yeah. guy, uh-huh. who's a bit of an outsider in this whole thing, doing his own thing marching to his own drum beat and i was like oh this probably was your trial run <laughs> right before the iron man movies happened so yeah, that and, was sort of funny yeah and succumbing to alcohol at the end of the film too much like uh, famously iron man does in the comics he's an alcoholic True. and struggles with that and downey jr did here too like his obsession drove him to to just alcoholism and drug addiction um, yeah yeah so but yeah what a brilliant movie it's it's such a mood piece you can just pick sections of the movie and just watch it and just kind of wallow in it and and yeah you're right like I think there's something about the mysterious quality of San Francisco which obviously lends itself to the actual murders like I feel <laughs> maybe like yeah. case would be <laughs> yeah quite different if it were in I don't know New York City or in yes. a small town in Iowa or what have yeah. you there's something about the city and That, once again, is captured in the movie as well. I wish there was a more, there was a shorter version of this movie, which, like, I keep thinking about this, that if there was an effortless, less rehearsed and less beaten down version of the same story done by Fincher or maybe somebody else, what would that feel like? Because you see the work put in Mm -hmm. in this movie, Mm -hmm. which I admire and appreciate a lot. But at the same time, it's unfair to compare this with Vertigo. Vertigo feels just so Mm. effortless, even though you know a lot of work has gone into it. Everything is intentional. The green dress is intentional. Oh, yeah. The trench coat is intentional. The gray pant jacket and skirt, all of it is intentional. But it just feels so effortless to me. This doesn't feel effortless. It's work that's on the screen. It's work for the audience as well. Uh, yeah. I'm happy to do it, but I always think <laughs> about that. It, yeah, interesting. It's, it's just that you mentioned Hitchcock there too, who was famously like incredibly hard on his actors yeah. as well. And which I think is a theme of Vertigo, actually, that I see that film as a version of Hitchcock, like Stewart's playing Hitchcock and how he deals with actors with Tell yeah. deals with Novak. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that Fincher has uh, inherited like that Kubrickian 
filmmaking process of a thousand takes, per, like trying to get to perfection by wearing actors down. Uh, but yeah, some actors enjoy it. It's funny you mentioned trying to find a shorter version because I was going to say like I you know, saw the movie in theaters, but the director's cut that is even longer is the one that I think is just such a much better film and the one that I go back to. I think it's like 15 or 20 minutes longer than the theatrical version. So I even prefer an even longer version versus a shorter one. But yeah, uh, and it's not yeah. about the length, actually. I think it's I know, more I about it's just the, funny you said that. the effortless nature of it. I think you, you, yeah. you see the work. And, you know, I, I appreciate the audacity of the director to say, I demand this work from you, audience members, as well, to come and meet me where mm -hmm. I'm at. So... I'm very happy to put in the work, but it's just a curious ex thought, ex thought exercise. No, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if there was a sort of a more spontaneous, effortless version of this movie, would it somehow capture something mm. else? Would it capture this undefinable mystery of the city in a different way? Versus mm. here, that's not what the movie is going after. It is going after the obsession of these it's, people. Right, right, right. And and how that drives, yeah. drives their, ruins their lives in a way, um, you, you can argue. Hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Kron and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now, or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.